Hi, everybody. Greg, Jenna, Will, and Tamina all here to pray evening prayer with you tonight. I hope you've had a good and safe and holy day and uh, are ready to pray. So we'll begin uh, in our prayer book with page 115 with a sentence of scripture. And then we'll go uh, directly to page 116 with the confession, just, just like we do all the time. Let us begin. Let my prayer be set forth in your sight as incense, the lifting up my hands as the evening sacrifice. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. O oh God, make speed to save us. O oh Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Tonight, uh, I'm going to chant the Vosiloron, uh, O Gracious Light. I want to invite you to Follow along with me, join in with me. It's S59 in the hymnal. Um, and also feel free to just listen and pray with me. Oh, gracious light, pure brightness of the ever-living Father in heaven. Oh, Jesus Christ, Holy and blessed, now as we come to the setting of the sun, and our eyes behold the vesper light, we sing your praises, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You are worthy at all times to be praised by happy voices. O Son of God, O giver of life, and to be glorified through all the Our psalms appointed for this evening are Psalms 12, 13, and 14. And in our prayer books, they begin on page 597. Jenna and I are going to read them responsively by whole verse, and I invite you to join us in reading them uh, either responsively or in unison or however works for you. Psalm 12. Help me, <clears throat> help me, Lord, for there is no godly one left. The faithful have vanished from among us. Everyone speaks falsely with his neighbor. With a smooth tongue, they speak from a double heart. Oh, that the Lord would cut off all smooth tongues and close the lips that utter proud boasts. 
Those who say, with our tongue will we prevail. Our lips are our own. Who is Lord over us? Because the needy are oppressed and the poor cry out in misery, I will rise up, says the Lord, and give them the help they long for. The words of the Lord are pure words, like silver refined from ore and purified seven times in the fire. O Lord, watch over us and save us from this generation forever. The wicked prowl on every side and that which is worthless is highly prized by everyone. Psalm 13. How long, O Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long shall I have perplexity in my mind and grief in my heart day after day? How long shall my enemy triumph over me? Look upon me and answer me, O Lord my God. Give light to my eyes, lest I sleep in death. Lest my enemy say, I have prevailed over him, and my foes rejoice that I have fallen. But I put my trust in your mercy. My heart is joyful because of your saving help. I will sing to the Lord, for he has dealt with me richly. I will praise the name of the Lord Most High. Psalm 14. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. All are corrupt and commit abominable acts. There is none who does any good. The Lord looks down from heaven upon us all to see if there is any who is wise, if there is one who seeks after God. Everyone has proved faithless. All alike have turned bad. There is none who does good. No, not one. Have they no knowledge, all those evildoers, who eat up my people like bread and do not call upon the Lord? See how they tremble with fear, because God is in the company of the righteous. Their aim is to confound the plans of the afflicted, but the Lord is their refuge. Oh, that Israel's deliverance would come out of Zion. When the Lord restores the fortunes of his people, Jacob will rejoice and Israel be glad. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the Gospel according to Matthew. This is chapter 23, verses 27 through 39. Jesus said to the crowds and to his disciples, Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For you are like whitewashed tombs, which on the outside look beautiful, but inside they are full of the bones of the dead and of all kinds of filth. So you also on the outside look righteous to others, but inside you are full of hypocrisy and lawlessness. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For you build the tombs of the prophets and decorate the graves of the righteous. And you say, if we had lived in the days of our ancestors, we would not have taken part with them in shedding the blood of the prophets. Thus you testify against yourselves that you are the descendants of those who murdered the prophets. Fill up then the measure of your ancestors. You snakes, 
you brood of vipers. How can you escape being sentenced to hell? Therefore, I send you prophets, sages, and scribes, some of whom you will kill and crucify, and some you will flog in your synagogues and pursue from town to town, so that upon you may come all the righteous blood shed on earth, from the blood of righteous Abel to the blood of Zechariah, son of Berechiah, whom you murdered between the sanctuary and the altar. Truly, I tell you, all this will come upon this generation. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to it. How often have I desired to gather your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, and you were not willing. See, your house is left to you, desolate. For I tell you, you will not see me again until you say, Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Here ends the reading. Will you join me in saying the Song of Mary, the Magnificat, on page 119? My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. For he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day forth, all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm he has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel for he has remembered his promise of mercy. The promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. We'll continue with the Apostles' Creed on page 120. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. continue on page 122 with suffrages B. That this evening may be holy, good, and peaceful. We entreat you, O Lord. That your angels may lead us in paths of peace and goodwill. We entreat you, O Lord. That we may be pardoned and forgiven for our sins and offenses. We entreat you, O Lord. 
that there may be peace to your church and to the whole world. We entreat you, O Lord. That we may depart this life in your faith and fear and not be condemned before the great judgment seat of Christ. We entreat you, O Lord. That we may be bound together by your Holy Spirit in the communion of the Blessed Virgin Mary and all your saints, entrusting one another and all our life to Christ. We entreat you, O Lord. Our collect of the day is proper nine. O God, you have taught us to keep all your commandments by loving you and our neighbor. Grant us the grace of your Holy Spirit, that we may be devoted to you with our whole heart and united to one another with pure affection. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A collect for protection is at the top of page 124. Oh God, the life of all who live, the light of the faithful, the strength of those who labor, and the repose of the dead. We thank you for the blessings of the day that is past and humbly ask for your protection through the coming night. Bring us in safety to the morning hours through him who died and rose again for us, your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. A prayer for mission. O God and Father of all whom the whole heavens adore, let the whole earth also worship you, all nations obey you, all tongues confess and bless you, and men and women everywhere love you and serve you in peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Will you join me in singing hymn 35, Christ Mighty Savior? with 
two of my very favorite things, hymns over a thousand years old and music by David Hurd. Amen. Let's begin our time of inter personal intercession and thanksgiving with these reflections from St. Augustine's prayer book. With trust in God's mercy, review your actions and words in the day that is ending. Remember the encounters you had with other people. Did you use your time wisely, working diligently and honestly? Have you maintained healthy habits and received God's gifts with gratitude? In your dealings with others, were you honest and kind? Where were you most aware of God's presence? And what particular blessings did you receive? What actions or failures to act need forgiveness? And are there things you need to do differently tomorrow? I invite you to name now, either silently or spoken, any individual intercessions or thanksgivings on your heart. For all those for whom we pray, all of our prayers, either spoken or silent, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let's conclude with the prayer of St. Chrysostom on page 126. Almighty God. You have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to him from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. Thanks, everybody. Thank you for joining us for prayer. Thanks for letting us join you in prayer. I hope we'll all be able to see one another soon. Y'all be safe, keep in contact with each other, and, uh, and hope and be well. Bye now.